Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super fun Halloween character to share with you that was highly requested. So without further ado, we've got Jack Skellington. He's super easy to make. His supplies are easy to come by. So if you want how to make this little guy, stick around. I'll show you how. Thanks for watching and be sure and give me a thumbs up because it really does help my channel. Thank you. Okay, for this one, I'm just using some pipe insulation and it measures one and three quarter inches across. And you can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot, any, any place like that has it. And then I'm going to cut this at three and a half inches. So I'm taking a piece of cotton fabric that measures four and a half by four and a half, and I'm just going to hem up the bottom edge. Now, when I put this around the noodle, I'm going to show you that you probably want to cut your fabric a little bit wider so you can go all the way around the noodle. And you're just going to come down just a little bit below the noodle and glue it in right at that hem line. But you want to probably do a piece of fabric that's going to cover this entire thing. Now, I didn't do it at the beginning, but I'm telling you along the way things that I would change. And then just go ahead and glue it to your noodle. Then we're going to go ahead and tuck it in. And this is why you should go all the way around so that when you do tuck it in, it's completely covered on the top. And then you won't see the pool noodle when you actually put the, the head on. Next, I'm taking a piece of fabric that measures 10 and a half by 7 inches. And then we are going to fold the two short ends together. Now that's, if you want your stripes to go up and down, you need to cut your fabric out just like I have it laid out on, on my table here. So the long sides need to be straight up and down. And you're just going to go and glue each side together because we are going to turn this right side out so it has a perfect seam on it. Okay, next I'm just going to go ahead and snip the two corners on the side that's already folded over and then turn it right side out and I'm just going to use a bone folder to smooth it out and then I'm going to iron it so it is flat. Okay, next we're going to take the two raw edges and we're going to fold them inside about three quarters of an inch. So your final jacket will end up measuring four and a quarter inches in length. And then go ahead and iron that part smooth. And then we're just going to go ahead and put a bead of glue right down the center of it to hold it all together. Just make sure it matches on both sides because the jacket will come together at the center and you want to make sure it is even. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and attach it to our body. We're just going to come over the top and we're going to come down and glue in about two inches from the bottom. So just put a bead of glue down the front right there and then we're going to overlap the other one and we're going to glue it at about two inches as well because we are going to have a little a lapel on the front. And then you can go ahead and um, fold your lapel back. And then put a little bit of glue behind it just to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to add two little buttons right down the front. Just one at the very top and then one kind of centered in the middle. Next, to take the bath that goes up at the top of his neck. I'm just going to take a gel pen and I'm just going to draw a line through it. Now, it didn't work out for me well, so I got a chalkboard pen and it worked out great. Now, I've given you the link to this in the description below. You just download it and cut it out. And go over it twice will make it a little bit darker. Then we're just going to go ahead and glue it right to the very top part of his um, shirt. And then go ahead and pull the wings back a little bit and just glue those right to his lapel. Next to make the hands, I'm just using some oven baked clay and a hand mold. And just go ahead and take small pieces of your clay, open up the little cavity where your fingers are and fill those in first. Just get them all filled in, and if you do it this way, your hand will come out pretty thick. Just kind of fold it back there, and then we're going to clean it up in here in a second. And then put the thumb in there, and then just go ahead and fill the rest of it up. Just pull it down around the fingers until you can see the finger shape.
and then pull any excess off because you want to make sure that they're kind of flat. And do the other one exactly the same way and then just go ahead and take them out of the mold. Now we're going to roll the fingers a little bit. We're going to lengthen them because he had pretty long fingers. So we are going to have to lengthen these. But just kind of take your time on this part. Just kind of roll it in your finger and until they get the length you want. Almost twice as long as they were. And then do exactly the same thing with the second one. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and curl his fingers inward on all of them, including the thumb on both of them. And then we're going to attach a wire to them before we bake them. Now I'm just taking a piece of wire that's seven inches in length and just run it through the bottom part of the hand. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to pull the um, clay up around there a little bit and then go ahead and bake these at 275 degrees for 25 minutes. And next, I'm just using a two and a half inch clear ornament and I'm going to spray paint it with a satin white, bright white paint. I'm just putting a, a dowel stick through it, putting on some styrofoam and I'm going to take it outside and paint it. But just make sure you paint the entire thing. Next, we're just going to cut a stencil out of his eyes, and I've given you this in the in the description below. Just download and cut it out, and we're just going to cut the eyes out and use this as a stencil. So go ahead and cut it completely out, and then we're going to tape the sides closed where we cut it, and then we are going to tape it onto our ornament and so that we can put our eyes on. We're just going to draw them on there. And I'm just using a pencil to trace that out onto my ornament. And then we're going to pull that off of there and then we're going to take a black Sharpie and draw it on there. Just kind of take your time on this part and then we're going to color it in with the Sharpie then come back in with some paint and fill it in. And then for his nose, it was just easier just to kind of draw it in. Just like draw two little seeds. And then just take a small paintbrush and some black, matte black paint, and then just go ahead and finish painting it in. This really wasn't that hard. I mean, you could stay in the line pretty easy. Just take your time on this. And then here in a little bit after that dries, we're going to do the mouth. And for the mouth, I'm just going to take a real fine paintbrush and I'm just going to freehand this one on here. Now, if you have a Cricut or something like that, I've given you the SVG file, both for the little bat for his um, collar and these eyes and the nose, if you want to cut them out with your um, Cricut. Okay, now for his fingers, I'm going to just paint the joints between them. There's three separate places on his finger that you're going to paint the joint, and you're going to go all the way around the finger with that. And do that for all the fingers. Okay, next for his arms, I'm just going to use two little Nerf bullets, and I'll give you the link to where I got these below. You can get these just about anywhere, and if, I'm just going to go ahead and run it right down the, the wire and glue it to the hand. Now, you don't have to use Nerf bullets. You could actually use some quilt batting to wrap around there if you wanted to, but just make sure you do glue it to the hand. Okay, then for the legs, I'm just going to take two dowel sticks, and I'm going to cut them off at five inches in length each. And then I'm going to sharpen them with a pencil sharpener. And then we're going to use two more Nerf bullets on the legs. And then just put those aside and we're going to do the arms next. Okay, for his arms, we're going to take a piece of fabric that measures two and three quarter by five inch. And we're going to fold up one side one inch. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to flip it up a half inch. And this is just going to be a cuff for his sleeve. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold over one side and glue it down. And then go ahead and glue in his cuff on both sides. And then do the same thing with the other sleeve. Just one inch up and make your cuff. And I'm going to go ahead and glue my cuff in now. And then just glue up one side only. 
Okay, then we're just going to attach it to the arm. So just kind of wrap it all the way around and then just glue the finished edge over the top of the unfinished edge. And then do that for both of them. And then go ahead and flip it around where the seam is in the back and go ahead and glue the sleeve to the hand. I didn't show you that part there, but you need to do that. And do the same thing with the second arm. Next, we're going to take a cork and we're going to whittle it down because we want it to go inside of the head. So go ahead and spend some time getting this whittled as far down as you can so that you can put it right up inside the head and it stays. And then we're going to use E6000 glue inside of there as well as hot glue to hold all this together. Next, I'm going to take a piece of fabric that measures three and a quarter by three inches, and I'm going to hem up two sides on this. And it's just the adjoining sides that you're um, hemming up. And then I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around his neck. So he had so he has a, a collar on his neck. Now I didn't tell you this before, but when you put that cork down inside of that noodle, make sure that you cut that cork off short enough so that you can get your arms in there. So you want to cut this cork. You don't want to leave it the same length because I did have to pull it back out and shorten it. You just want to cut it down to where it just barely goes inside of that noodle and holds in place. But you want to make sure that your noodle clears where your arms are going to come through. So I would probably cut that um, cork probably in half. And then go ahead and put it right down inside of your noodle and glue it in. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and cut a hole in the side for his arms. And I'm cutting him down one inch from the top edge of that collar. And you got quite a bit of fabric there, so you are going to have to cut it probably with your scissors as well. And then take a dowel stick and go ahead and push it all the way through. Now this is why I was saying to cut your cork shorter. Because you want that dowel stick to go to the inside of that noodle. And if you don't cut your cork shorter, you won't get that um, dowel stick through that noodle. Okay, then you're going to cut off about a quarter of an inch of your fabric and cut your wire at the same time. You just I changed it up here. So just, instead of just cutting off the fabric, cut the wire too. And then I'm taking a dowel stick, I'm going to sharpen both ends of it, and I'm going to push the sharpened end down into the top part of the little Nerf um, bullet, and I'm just barely going inside of there. And then I'm going to cut off the opposite side to about a quarter of an inch is all you need. Just need a little bitty stud stuck out there to go into the body. And then do exactly the same thing with the opposite arm. Just make sure you get your fabric pretty flat there. And just take a dowel stick and poke it in there really good, kind of twist it in there really good so that you have um, an opening in there to actually attach the harm here in a second. And we're just going to take some E6000 glue to put this in. I'm not using any hot glue, but I am using a lot of E6000 glue. Go ahead and put your arm all the way down in there. We're just kind of kind of facing upward, you know, kind of shape his arm where you want it. And then set these aside and let them dry real good when you're done. This will keep your noodle from melting, and then you just put your arms in there, but do let it dry real well. Just stick it aside while we make the rest of the body. Okay, for the shoes, we're going to take two 3 8 inch nuts. We're going to put them side by side, and we're going to roll them up into some foil. Just make sure that you get the bottom flat. And then we're going to go ahead and cut both sides off, and then just kind of round it off. And do the same thing with the other one. Okay, next I'm just going to take some black oven baked clay. I'm just going to kind of roll it out. And all we're going to do is just completely cover up this piece of foil. And then just pull off any excess because you want his shoes to be a little bit small. Just kind of really fill it in where it's completely solid. And you don't have a lot of extra um, clay hanging over the edges. 
but you don't want you want to make sure that you do cover up all your foil. And then just round the toe and then round out the back. Then we're going to take another piece of clay and make the top part of a shoe. Just kind of roll it in a ball. Probably about a quarter inch ball. And then we're just going to put it right on top and then we're going to blend it in. And then just go ahead and take your dowel stick and make a, a hole in there so that we can put his foot in after we um, after we bake them. You're going to bake them for 25 minutes at 275 degrees. And next, go ahead and stick your dowel sticks up into your styrofoam and make him stand like you want him to. Make sure he stands up and then go ahead and mark where the top part of that dowel stick is. And then we're going to add Nerf bullet bullets to the legs too, just like we did the arms. And we're just going to go up to that mark that you just marked. So I'm going to use probably about a half an inch more on each side of this one. But don't go up any farther than that. Just to the mark that you actually made because that's how you have him standing. Next, we're going to take a piece of fabric that measures four inches by five and a half inches to do his legs. And we are just going to cuff up one long end and one short end. Now kind of look how your pattern is going because this is the this is going to roll up around him. So you want to make sure that your stripes go up and down on the short end. And then do exactly the same thing with the other leg. Okay, next go ahead and take your leg and we're just going to wrap this around. We're going to freely wrap it, so don't glue it to the leg. Just go wrap all the way around as tight as you can. And then we're going to glue down the back and then we're going to put the seam into the back. So don't glue it to it first. Just go right up that seam, glue that down, and then we're going to twist that um, seam right to the back. And then we'll glue it to the leg as well. And you don't need a lot of glue on the leg and then do the same thing with the other leg. Next, we're going to take the excess um, at the top and we're just going to glue it straight to the dowel stick. So just put a little bit of glue down there and then kind of push it down. But don't push your noodle down. You, I mean, your um, bullet down. You want to make sure it stays the same height. And then we're going to go ahead and stick them on up into our guy. Now I'm going to show you something to reinforce this a little bit here in a second. I'm going to glue in the first leg and then I'm going to come back in with a small piece of cork and stick it up through the center hole of that noodle and that will strengthen his legs. So push it up in there. Make sure they stand straight up still. And then take a cork and just stick it right into the center hole and that will stiffen up those legs. And then go ahead and pull the second one out and go ahead and glue it in as well. All right, that was pretty much it. Okay, thank y'all so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. He turned out super cute. I had fun making him. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you're notified when I have a new video upload. Thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate it.